Historically, uh, and still nowadays, people tend to want to separate off the brain into the brain, uh, which is neurological, and then the mind, which is mental, psychological, psychiatric. But the more that we learn about the brain, we can see that it doesn't work in that way, and that the brain and the mind occupy the same organ. And because of that, it makes a lot of sense that across neurological illnesses, uh, even if the neurological illness is predominantly presenting with brain-type problems, so neurological-type problems, physical problems, that often it also affects emotional health as well. There's another side to that as well, which is, of course, living with a chronic illness is something which also can affect mental health. So I think, I think that's important for uh, everybody with neurological illness, but also for people with dystonia to recognise that uh, mental health problems are uh, a fact of life of uh, neurological illness for many people, and that that's not a stig shouldn't be a stigmatising thing, um, but it's something which can actually be a treatable problem as well, and should be thought about alongside other treatments for uh, uh, dystonia. So uh, again, it's one of those areas where there's not a, a great deal of evidence to go on, specifically for people with dystonia. But there's good evidence of how to help people who have, for example, anxiety disorders or depression. And those things can be relevant also for helping people who also have dystonia. Uh, those treatments can be with talking therapies, those can be with medication or with both. Uh, and it's something to, I think, look at alongside more traditional uh, neurological treatments for dystonia and to think about the symptoms with the same level of, of care and genuineness, really. Um, so just as one might look after one's physical health, also look after mental health too. Mm -hmm.